Hello people, how's it going? This is episode three of Life and Living. This is gonna be a solo episode. The thing I wanna talk about today is getting organized so that you don't get fucked over. And I also wanna to touch on second guessing yourself and holding yourself back. I'm just gonna go straight into it. And I'm gonna use my own experience as kind of the storyline and, and the things that I've learned along the way. So really, I just wanna share my experience because hopefully someone else can see it, whether they're older, younger, or different stage, similar stage in their life and get something that's good and valuable from it. Where I wanna start is when I was about 21, I was basically spending all my money on weed. I would just smoke weed every single day. I was probably spending two to 400 pounds a week on weed and being late on my rent payment. I was living in a shared house at the time. I was only paying like, it's like 340 pound rent and didn't have to pay any bills and <clears throat> probably spending like a hundred quid on food and everything else I was just spending on weed. And I remember sitting there one day and being like, I've like not had my rent in the bank the week before it's due for ages. And I was just saying like, what what needs to change? How do I do that? And basically there was a guy who I lived with and he was really good with money and he lived really frugally and he was good with his money management. He was much more organized than I was. And yeah, he, he basically said, you know, you're spending all your money on weed, mate, and your head's all fucked because you're smoking so much weed. And he was right. And when I stopped, you know, I, I was able to save two to 400 pound a week, no problem. And that just put me in a much better financial situation. And it meant that I wasn't desperate for money as much because say you've not got money for the rent and the rent is due in three days time. And you know, you've know you got a couple of items laying around you. You've got a phone, a laptop, a camera, computer, whatever it is. And you need to sell that in the next few days in order to get the money up. Then you're desperate and you got to kind of take what you can get for it. And you don't have the best uh, negotiating power in, in that kind of situation because you're desperate. And this is the problem with being desperate is you kind of have to just take what you can get. And that's a shit situation to be in. I feel like there have definitely been situations where I've been taken advantage of by people who were more organized and just had their shit together more than I did. And I, I know plenty of people now from working with different people and I see the way that some other people work. And for example, I know someone who, he would employ people who have just come to this country. They'd be claiming benefits, so they would want to be paid in cash. And because they weren't very good at what he was getting them to do, because they basically could hardly speak English and, and like follow very basic instructions, that they would be paid like six or seven pounds an hour. And they would work 50, 60 hours a week for that money, you know, working 50 hours for 300 quid or something. And they would do it because there wasn't another option for them. They, they don't speak the language. They have no skill. If they get paid on the books, i.e. through PAYE and it's, it's taxed income, like properly legit, that they then wouldn't be eligible for their benefits. And then they would, you know, have to get a more higher paid job, which they just weren't qualified for, basically. Qualified for yet, just they just didn't meet the criteria. So this guy would take advantage of people because they didn't have their shit together. And this is a guy who is super organized and like has his shit together enough to be able to take advantage of people who don't and the the the, the concept i always think of in in you know along those lines is when people say that, that during a recession in you know an investor type person would say they can't wait for a, a recession so they can start getting cheap deals on things when people are panic selling when that dip in the market comes they'll be ready to start buying all the stuff that's cheap so i'm not saying that's a bad thing to do but that is a better situation to be in than be the one who's panic selling because the situation's changed a bit or you just don't have your shit together. So you got to take what you can get. Because when you can have that negotiating power and you can walk away from something because you don't like need, need it now, you're not desperate for it you could walk away and still be okay. Because you can do that, you can actually select what what deals you want to interact with and what people you want to interact with. And you just got more negotiating power because you're not, you're not stuck. You can say, that's a good thing for me. That's not a good thing for me. That's right for me. That's not right for me. And select on that basis rather than just having to do it. So there's that. Some of the ways I think that people can do that. The first one is just to audit your money. <clears throat> I can't tell you how instrumental having a spreadsheet that just says my income, my expenses, my recurring costs like direct debits and just giving me a picture of what is my financial situation? How much is my balance? 
How much savings do I have? What is my income this month? What are my expenses on a monthly basis? What are my expenses for this particular month? And my my kind of financial planning has developed so that I now have a like 24 month outlook on it. So I can see based on average income and expenses, how much I should have in 24 months. And that's not really that necessary. But like, I just like to know a bit more, a bit more detail about where I'm going to be where I think like what sort of costs I'm going to have at that moment in time so that I can plan accordingly. Because if I know that my costs are going up in three months or going down in three months, then I can allocate my money differently and just kind of, you know, factor it into my plan. Because, you know, you don't just end up with a good financial situation by accident. It's a purposeful thing. And this is where having a plan and being a bit more stable, like for example, if someone says something like, I don't know where all my money's gone this month, you know, they, they just didn't have a plan because if you actually plan that, you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't plan it like that. And if you don't even know what happened, then you're just reckless. You just don't have a fucking clue what's going on. And it, it literally takes five minutes a day, if that. And, and, you know, you could do it once a week. It doesn't even, you don't even have to do it that regularly once it's set up and you kind of got a system going. So, I think the first section is to like plug the leaky holes. You know, if you spend £20 a day on fags or you spend £30, £40 a day on weed or you spend £100 a week in the pub or more, like I think for a lot of people that do that regularly, like 100 quid a week is like a cheap habit for some people. And this is where if you just plug that leaky hole, you, you know, that money that's coming in isn't just fucking disappearing. And it's not even like you're getting anything for that money. You know, it's something which you're just smoking and throwing away or you're just drinking and then it's, it's gone like you're not even actually getting something for it like fair enough if you were like buying things that you were actually using that you know last you a while like a computer that you're going to use to make money with or a bike or a car or something like that um so yeah basically plug the leaky holes you do an audit on yourself do a bit of a budget budget plan i'm probably gonna make some videos about that at some point get a budget in place get a financial plan in place and plug the leaky holes audit yourself just audit your time audit what you're spending and i think when you start doing an audit you start to see wait how much did i spend on food last month or why am i spending this much on coffees you know do i need to do that and what I think you end up doing in that situation when you actually go through that is you start to say things like, do I need that? Yes or no? Is that a discretionary expense or is that like a required living expense? And when you start to look at that, I think you'll see that for most people, like they spend a lot of money on shit that they don't need, that isn't basic living expenses. They're what you could call discretionary expenses, things that you could have done without. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't allocate money for entertainment. Like there's no point in, you could die next week, you could die tomorrow. So like, don't be so hard on yourself that you don't have any enjoyment, but don't do your enjoyment at the expense of your future self, because you're just doing a disservice to yourself in the future by living so in the moment that you're not leaving anything for yourself tomorrow. And then leaving yourself in a position that's hard to get out of because you are you don't have any negotiating power, for example. So there's that. And for example, all I did for a, a period of time, and I'm kind of back into doing it at the moment, is just to not really spend on anything that isn't necessary. Unless it's part of some project or business or something that you're working on, just cut the costs as much as possible. If you go out for coffees 15 times a month, just cut it back a bit. You don't have to stop it completely. This is what I mean. You don't need some like really strict regime for your money. You just need to fucking rein it in a bit. So there's that. That's going to be helpful to get organized and you start to decide what you want to happen for yourself. And then you can you can decide if you get involved with things based on that rather than just needing to. And I think naturally, once you start to look at managing your money and creating plans, you start thinking about things in a more long term way. You start to think about goals and say, this is the goal that I have. Is my behavior today mapping to me moving towards that goal or away from that goal? And like, for example, a financial goal is a really simple one to do that with. You could say, my goal is to have six months of my living expenses saved by this date, just like an arbitrary thing just a random one and you can basically say is my behavior mapping towards that 
away from that. So it gives you a, a kind of compass in the present moment to know if you're heading in the right direction of where you want to get to or not. When you actually do make a plan and you set a destination you want to get to and you start mapping your behavior to move towards it, you naturally move towards it. There's no magic trick involved in that. This is where it's not actually that difficult to do. It's a lot of things to get in place for you to be in that position from not being, you know, having anything set up. But once it's actually in place, there's no guesswork. There's no fucking magic trick. It just, it just naturally moves towards it. The next thing I want to touch on quickly is self-doubt and being feared of failure, second guessing yourself, low self-esteem and how these, these kind of things, they make you your own worst enemy. Things are already hard enough without you holding yourself back, without you putting roadblocks in your own way. This is something which I think a lot of young people do because they haven't learned how to not do it yet. And some people don't do it, that's fine. But there are a lot of people who do. I think a lot of people may have not even been able to articulate this about themselves yet that they have self-doubt, that they don't do things because of what they think other people might think of them. So they miss opportunities. They have low self-esteem, so they set a low bar for themselves. Let's use the example of someone with low self-esteem who lets other people treat them like shit. Because they don't have that bar that they of what they will and won't accept, they'll accept people treating them like shit, whether that's in relationships or a job or just any situation in their life where they're not being treated the way that they deserve, let's say. So having a higher self-esteem, it gives you a bit more self-worth and you, you kind of have a limit to what you will and won't accept. So some of the ways that we can overcome this can be challenging any negative self-talk that you have in your head. So trying to reframe any negative self-talk to something positive. There's a book called The Secret, which talks about this quite a lot. And the next thing is to be compassionate to yourself, be kind to yourself. One of the biggest things that has, has been something that's held me back is just me being hard on myself. And it, it makes me feel stressed. It makes me feel anxious. And it, it just isn't helpful. Like there is a level of pushing yourself that's good. But being harsh on yourself is not it's not good. And it makes me, for example, start second guessing myself about everything. And that is just so not useful. And it's, it's really important to not listen to these self-doubts all the time. The next thing is taking action despite fear and doubt. So again, that's like this. I have doubts about this. I have fears about this. I, I worry what people might think. Even though when I think about it logically, it's just bollocks, like it doesn't matter. It still goes through my head. And there's things with my business which which worry me. There's fears around that. Will it do what I think it's going to do? Will it do what I'm aiming for it to do? But you take action anyway, even though you're scared. The biggest one for me, biggest one, surrounding yourself with supportive, positive people. Because if everyone you're around is negative, has nothing going on in their life, doesn't support you, is selfish, like these these kind of people that question what, what you're doing and put you down about things that you're trying, you know, like, the people in my in my mind who I think of of talking shit about me making a video like this, don't be around those people. Be around the people who say that was really good. Here's you know, if they have something to say about it that's constructive criticism, then they'll say it in a way which is polite, it's nice, and it is actually helpful. So there's that. And then celebrating small wins. I think it's really good to just keep a list of small things. For example, I have not been able to film a video like this and stay pretty much looking at the camera for most of the time without stopping, without recording it fucking a hundred times. I haven't been able to do that in ages because I've kind of lost momentum with it. And, you know, I've been meaning to do it and I've tried it and I fucked it up. And after this, I'll probably write, I've got a little list on Trello of small wins. And this is this is gonna be a small win when, when it's actually edited and posted. I don't want to be too premature. And yeah, these, these kind of things, they actually help you move towards the goals that you do set. So at the beginning, we talked about setting goals and mapping your behavior towards them. But the hard thing then is actually just doing that behavior because then you've got all these other, you know, self-limiting beliefs, worries, fears, doubts, second guessing, negative self-talk. I can't do that. I don't deserve that. I'm scared of that. I don't want to look like a failure. I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want people to leave nasty comments. You cannot move towards the thing that you say you want to do if you don't fucking do it because 
you're scared of someone leaving you a nasty comment. And this is where like, it's, a, it's mad what people will turn down opportunities wise because of these small fears that aren't actually that bad. And for example, I want to be able to learn public speaking. I want to try it. It's one of these like irrational fears, you know, it's not something I've really tried at all, but it's some, I think, I think it's something which a lot of people are irrationally scared of, of just talking in front of a group of people. So that's something which I personally want to try and do just because it feels uncomfortable. I think it's good to do things to push yourself. If it's uncomfortable, it's like with my girlfriend, Lauren, in the gym, she's like doing stuff and she's saying, oh, that's really hard. It's like, it's supposed to be hard. It's not supposed to be fucking easy. If we just came in here and banged out the one kilo dumbbells every time, <laughs> like it's not doing anything. It's meant to be hard. It's And afterwards, it's meant to, you know, your muscles are meant to feel sore when you've worked them. So, you know, things that are difficult can be good. And yeah, that's it for now, I think. This has been a solo episode. Production value on this is low. Recorded on an iPhone. Thank you for listening if you made it all the way. If you're interested in content like this, I'm going to be sharing much more of it on a more regular basis. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for more stuff like this.